Hey, what's up, Nathan? Good, man. Last year we did this, Jeremy and I. We had to prove to some tossers that we weren't the same person. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wait, did, did you have to do it? Why'd you have well, to do had, it? We just had a chat on Antonio's channel with each other. And the main reason I did it back then was to prove that I'm not him and vice yeah. versa. So we just chatted about... Um, um, what's the gem panda from? What It's from a game, Second Life. That's yeah, Second, Second Life. Life. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had a chat about Second Life. You know, it's just a conversation. Mm. But just to prove that we weren't the same bloody person, which is ridiculous, because if anybody's watching this and is English, it's blatantly the obvious. Yeah, I know, but if we listen to an American, like if you're like, I guess younger, you just listen to any American, just go, oh, they sound exactly the fucking same. But as you, you grow up, you kind of catch their, their voices are different, you know, as you go up and down the country, the accents are different. And, you know, I never say the earth's flat, so. Yeah, I mean, that's a good way of telling. <laughs> no, you're just, a, you're just Nathan's soccer camp. You never talk at the same time. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. To interrupt me, Jeremy, so that people know that he's definitely... Yeah, there you go. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Keep look, speaking. You never talk at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to talk over you now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a blazing round that, and then that'll, uh, that'll fix it. Too You're too rational, most 99% of the subjects you cover. I'm actually agree in agreement with most of the way you say it, do Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. You wait until the green video something. comes out, then, then you'll fall out with me. Mm. <laughs> you know what? what video comes out? My moon video. I'm making this video oh, about... God, oh, yeah. He's making up telemetry data, too. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> 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 Him and P. Mars are over there like... I know what would get them is that telemetry data. <laughs> <laughs> just punch away, away at a calculator. That's why P. Mars is out of breath. He's over there typing away. Just turn it. <laughs> take the Crunching phone. the numbers, man. Yeah. Sorry, man. What's with this chat? Yeah. So there's like, there's like a side chat on this. I've come in through G+, and all constantly going past me is like, I don't know. Tim Osman and P. Mars, they're just like, is, are they part of the Hangout but just not joining? What's the score with that? They have the link and they were... Uh, you, there's like a group chat that runs at the back of this, so anyone that's joined is in the group chat. Like, that's yeah. that's the right. thing that happens if any Hangout, pretty much. And so you, it's almost like a group chat where anyone who was in Hangout can chat with anyone, anyone or else who wasn't. Been invited in, yeah. I see, like the side chat. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But with lots of people. Yep. And it goes on forever. Mm. So the group chat is anyone who is currently in the Hangout and the other, ch or the, yeah, or the Slack yeah, chat. Any, is... Anyone who has the link, anyone who has the link and is in the call. Yep. Basically, yeah, well, yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, I'm actually, this is awesome, man. I'm honored to have both of you guys on here. No. Good, you should be. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's what I like to hear. Uh, yeah, like... I see Spurs. I thought I saw Spurs a minute ago. Yeah, Spurs was on a moment ago. He's got a nice tattoo on his back now. Has he? Yeah. He's got a... Well, he's a, he's a fan of uh, Tottenham Hot Spurs, so... How do you know he's got a tattoo? Well, the, his avatar's got it. Oh. That's his oh. back, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder what the hell he was on about. It's a dodo, is it? Is it a dodo? What is it? I don't know, man. This dodo thing. Oh, I've seen Pete Shea say it. And yeah, man, it looks yeah. a bit bird. But so what? Why is everyone up in arms about it? What? What is it, Nat? Tell me what it is. I don't, All I keep hearing is about is this dodo. But what is he saying? That the right. the so, flat earth map is the shape of a dodo. Is, is that I think so. I think that's it. Right. Basically it. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> Is. I mean, so what? It just looks like a dodo. But so what? <laughs> you know, why is it <laughs> yeah. staring at me? Uh, All right, Nathan, hold on, hold on. Okay, Nathan, do you drink urine? Do you subscribe to urine therapy? I've, I've done various things with urine therapy. I would say I'd advocate it, yeah. If somebody was to come okay. to me and say X, Y, Z is wrong, I'd say, yeah, look into urine therapy if you've tried other things and they've not worked. Have, have you done it yourself? Yeah, I've done it, says so my wife. But you drank it? 
I've drank it. I've done various different things. Wow. Yeah, but that's that's even even then it's like yo, yeah, that's. I know, I know, but I mean, uh, okay, so doing it every single day. No. For, no, just do it every now and then. No, I've experimented with it. I mean, the things that. Okay. Were Festival. It's not like we. It's not like flat earthers made it up. Dude. No, 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 I'm just, no, no. But I mean, no. drinking, drinking it like pretty much re, re, like every day, no. as a thing. That's pr- surely not good for you, right? Well, I don't know. I'm not an expert in urine therapy. I mean, yeah. the person that I spoke to the most about urine therapy was someone called Dina Walker, and she was very, very useful, very, very knowledgeable. But there's loads of people. I mean, shit loads of flat earthers do do it, and they just don't talk about it. Mm. And, so the meme is correct, and the people who are seriously into it are the ones that you would least expect, and they won't talk about it because they know they'll be ridiculed. People like me who just mm. have all had to play with it. We're the ones that'll get ridiculed. I don't give a shit. You know, I mean, I can get, I can, I can, I can understand drinking it for like just to get rid of a an issue, like you have like a, a bug or something, and you drink urine and it goes away. And you don't have the symptoms of the bug or whatever the symptoms you had, which you were complaining about, yeah. And you stop, but drinking it all the time, I mean, surely, like, you know, having something every now and then in moderation is fine, but doing it all the time isn't good for you. Well, I'd agree with you. I mean, the first thing mm. that um, Dave um, Murphy was explaining, and several others who are also into the urine therapy, far, far more than I am. I mean, you're not keen on hearing my success story. The only success story I've got, and it wasn't even me, it was my wife, but I will get to that. But the first thing they said was that it's got to be clean urine. And by that, what they meant was, if you've got a diet of beer and fags and burgers and pies, and you drink Mm -hmm. it, it will be be horrible. (laughs) Yes, but not only that, you've also got to keep yourself well hydrated. So if you've only just got up in the morning, you haven't drank for like seven hours because you've obviously been asleep or whatever. It's going to be I, I gotta extremely... Say this, though. I got to say this. I'm not trying to really discuss the finer points of anything to do with urine therapy. You know what right. I mean? Okay, you don't like it. Well, it's, not that I, well it's, not that I, it's just something that it is. It's just it is. No, and I no, don't like, you know, I, I'll, let, I'll let... I mean, if, if I would make one, like really one last comment on it, I would let Nathan explain, as I'm sure he wants to, how it may have helped. They go for it. Yeah, I mean, well, the only success story I can give is my wife, who used not her urine, but her child's urine, baby urine, which is full of stem cells. This is like a well-known thing. And she used it on a stretch mark. And basically, she had, our daughter was a couple of weeks late, and she'd rubbed in, throughout her whole pregnancy, she'd rubbed in butters and oils and coconut oils and, uh, um, and you know, bio oils, you name it. Oh, yeah remained perfect <laughs> like un, like no like perfect until the last two weeks and then it just went all to hell in the handbag because she just got massive inside my wife and so suddenly she's got all these really bad nasty tear marks all over and it looked like minging and she used baby urine on it and it and it's now all but gone you know as a as a result of it and she's you know people go oh well have you compared it to other bits it's like well yeah she's got other bits of the body that she hasn't put it on and they're still there so mm. i would say yes so there's, there's a definite improvement on account of the fact that it's got repairing agents inside it so that was a success story so and it wasn't a surprise to anybody i told it to when i recounted it back to the people who do this and know a lot more about it than than I do. And I would say that the reason for that success story spans back to clean urine. You know, when you've got a baby, all she's eating is breast milk. It's not going to be full of burgers and fags and booze. You know, it's not going to be like my urine, which would be fab. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's the people who do this tend to be clean living vegans that are on a, a nut and, you know, fruit and veg diet. And uh, I've got very, very clean lifestyles to begin with, in, especially in terms of their diet. And yeah, those are the people that would advocate it. But would I advocate it to you or me? <laughs> Probably not, because I've got no. a terrible diet. <laughs> uh, I mean, m- maybe if I've like hydrated myself and I've drank a lot of, you know, I drink water or something, then maybe. But all right, like, all right, yeah. all right. Everyone can anyway, yeah, but let's, let's yeah, yeah. change the subject. Shall, shall yeah, we change yeah, yeah. subject? Moving swiftly. On. Moving on swiftly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Any, anything but. I wonder even how far best, are we. information from this is probably Jen Panda. I mean, he's told me everything I know about the subject. And speak to him for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
What's that? Sorry. Uh, no. Urine therapy. Okay. Oh, urine therapy. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Nathan's just taking the piss there. <laughs> Probably. I had to get one of those in. Yeah. <laughs> Already Someone had to say it. People who it would never really admit to it so you know I've, I've already put your cover in for you jeremy it's okay no one's gonna quiz you <laughs> oh you're pissing him uh, off now all right <laughs> i pissed in a bottle on a bus once <laughs> that count he didn't drink it so no <laughs> no i got I, I was going on holiday and i got the bus to from nottingham to gatwick <laughs> fucking hell it took fucking hours I think I got on the bus at 10 to 2 in the morning and it got there at about half oh, past 9 or something it, t- it takes as long as the flight would take to get a bus oh, man it was like, a from nightmare. you know what we went We went in January and um, it had snowed really badly so it like, took even longer <laughs> it took so long anyway I just I'd, we the where you got on the bus was opposite a nightclub. <laughs> so, so me and me mate, oh, let's go in here. <laughs> so we went and had about, you know, two swift, two or three swift pints in this nightclub, came out, got on the bus, hey, we're going on holiday. Got about <laughs> half an hour down the road, absolutely bursting for a week. <laughs> so... Uh, well, um, the empty bottle and did it in that. Those were the days. Oh yeah, those were the days. That's a beautiful story. I'm yeah. More... <laughs> I think that's... the guitar helped it as well. That's when they they would let you on an aircraft when you were drunk. <laughs> but they don't do that anymore. <laughs> no. And belligerent. and belligerent. I remember smoking cigarettes on a plane. That was those were the days. The, yeah, you get this, the air quality was better when you could smoke on planes. So yeah, it reduced the cost for the airlines to recirculate the air quite as often now that they don't have smoking on flights. Air, right, air quality is below the standard that it was when they had smokers on flights because they had right. to air so much more. So you I get. Don't know now than you ever did and it really shows man when you i remember flying man i hated flying it was horrible i mean from this perspective don't get me wrong it's fantastic and glorious that you can fly at all but the being inside like the inside of a i don't know kind of cashew that's that's what it felt like you know inside a fart can basically just horrible just people's farts that's all you could ever smell mm. <laughs> it's horrible that's true, isn't it? You do fart a lot on a plane. I know I do. This the uh, the, the the air pressure makes my flight. And you, the inside of your body has to has to try and try and get. Tired. And also because almost always an aeroplane flight for me, all, almost always involves a cooked breakfast at some point during the day preceding or immediately preceding the flight. So that means you've consumed it, you know, you usually consume some baked beans. And that helps things along a little bit. Really? A little bit. <clears throat> you can't go on holiday without a cooked breakfast, Nathan. Come on. I, never, I was never flying on holiday. I mean, I'd be flying from one international destination to another international destination. The chances of me having a cooked breakfast in bloody Beijing or somewhere, you know, you're eating duck's feet, you know, deep fried duck's feet. In the right, yeah, I guess so. That's your breakfast. You know, like, ugh. As I was thinking, that's nothing like a fried breakfast. What's he talking about? But of course, yeah. <laughs> Most of Brit, it's like when you I've had, like I've had breakfast on a plane. That was nasty. Yeah, I've had that several times. It's just, it just, in the old days, the they used to always give you a meal, didn't they? Even when you were flying to Spain, they used to give you uh, Have they given up on that now? Yeah, yeah you have to buy it now, don't you? You, get, you go on easy jet. You, get, mm. you know, you pay about three quid for a cheese sandwich, don't you? Or a pressure, well, no, it's like pressure taste. cooker. They have a pressure very cooker. Very nice on cheese sandwich, Johnny. Mm. Johnny. I, I will give them that. It's definitely not like that. I mean, it's only like that if you're traveling and it's not necessary to feed you. But I mean, every flight I've been on where you're traveling enough distance for them to require for you to require food they don't let you starve you know? no 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 but on on cheap uh, you know on a like a, a a holiday flight to spain 
They yeah. always you always used to get a cooked meal. Yeah. Well, you don't you don't anymore. You don't need to be fed in the course of a couple of hours. Come on. I know, but you always used to get one. I think it used to be a thing, you know, like you know, way way back when people weren't so used to flying, it was a way to distract them. You know what I mean by giving them something to eat, and it was kind of part of the thing that you did. You know. Yeah, but it's only really things. since these, you know, the real low price airlines like like EasyJet and um, Ryanair have come along that 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 really went. But before that, well, perhaps a little bit before that, but um, before that, yeah, you, you should get it automatically. Mm. That was when of those meals came when it was EasyJet and Ryanair, and they basically took every single part of the flight and divvied it out into sections. And you know, the flight ended up being three quid. But every little bit of baggage check was an extra charge. You know, right. Like, where the guy, the owner of, I think it was Brian Air, was saying, you know, at some point he joked that they charge for using the toilet. And people yeah. Were, but yeah, that's what it came to. But yeah, that is the cheap two hour, three hour, four hour. You know, you don't really need a lunch in that, you know, unless you're some greedy fat breeze. <laughs> and then you need a cup. Right. But I mean, I guess that's the thing. I mean, it has brought the price down a lot. You know what I mean? You could, ne you never used, you know, used to fly to Spain. It would be, you know, two hundred and fifty quid or something like that. You can do it for like thirty quid now. I have no idea. Man. I never used to pay for the flights. I had this. I had Merrill. <laughs> I just phoned up Merrill and went. I need to fly to here, and, and then she sort my ticket out. <laughs> so I didn't know how much right. it cost. I had no idea. I just didn't put a flight. You know, it's, where does this fly from? I drive to the airport. And then get on the plane but yeah i don't know i assume flying is expensive it seems like something that should cost a lot of money yeah but i've seen them advertised on the front page of british newspapers you can fly to spain for a pound or something ludicrous yeah crazy crazy things although usually when when you look into that you know it's a pound but then you know, there's a whole load of shit that you have to pay, and that only gets you one way, and then you have to buy the return flight, and that's seventy pounds, you know, or something like that. So they usually find a way of sneaking it back up there, you know, to something where they can make money. Mm. Yeah, greedy airliners. <laughs> but they don't. They don't. You know, they've never made a big margin. You know that that you know airlines go out of business all the time because they're always sort of. Operating on the edge, you know what I mean. Yeah, I remember doing of like when you could <coughs> travel. You could get really. I'm sure the flights would be cheap because they were empty. There were under. I mean, I was always flying at horrible times. It was just when the next flight. So it didn't matter to me, if I, you know, because you're travelling around. You don't care if it's three in the morning because it's not right. Three, it's only three in the morning where you are. Your body mm. is two in the afternoon. So who cares? You know, just get on the next flight. But you get on the flight. And it'd be a, a seven four seven. It would be enormous, and there'd be no one on it. And you'd be like, "Wow, there's like twenty people on this flight." Yeah. The reason it's like that is because obviously they've dumped all the people that have got on the desirable flight, but the plane's still needed back in China or wherever you're flying to. So right. Yeah. There, you know, they get to Hong Kong, and suddenly there's a whole boatload of people that need to go to their next destination on that flight, but. The undesirable flight would presumably be cheap. You've just got to be savvy enough to know how to plan your travel around, you know, getting on a flight at 4 a.m., which I did frequently. But who wants to do that, I suppose, when you're going to Mallorca? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mallorca. It's been a while. Mallorca, mate. Mallorca. <laughs> Anyway, I've got one question because I'm going to have to. I know my wife's going to get woken up by me talking. Um, right. So, Jeremy, what's the Gems Panda? What is it? Just explain it to me. It was um, it was a game that I made, and it was um, it's called. Do you remember Tamagotchis? I know what Tamagotchi is, but I don't remember. I never played with it. So. Right. It was like a little thing that you you know you had to feed it and care for. It. It's kind of like that. But the thing with Gem Pandas was you could breed them. So you get a male and a female together and you will get babies. And those babies, it had a, a, a Mendelian a system of a, sort of based on Mendelian genetics. So it actually has a system of genetics whereby you can get, you know, a offspring with rare traits. That's a new word for me, Mendelian genetics. Can you explain? Right. Well, um, Mendel is seen as a, a 
I think he's Gregor Mendel or something like that. But he's he was a, a monk, and uh, he's seen as the sort of the father of modern genetics. He he essentially, uh, you know, discovered genes, if you like, because Darwin Darwin had you know he suggested there might be something like that. But basically, Darwin believed in this idea of uh, blended inheritance, where you were just sort of taking traits from both parents and just sort of stirring them up effectively and what came out came out but what Mendel did was he he was able to isolate you know dominant and recessive genes and he did this by uh repeatedly uh uh growing pea pea plants which which grow quite quickly and he grew <coughs> you know thousands and thousands of these pea plants and noted down various traits from them. And, uh, you know, he did all sorts of things, you know, the size of the plant and the color and the shape of the seed and this sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, the, the sort of simple way it was explained to me was with the color of the flowers, which, which he also noted. And what he did was he took um, a white, a, a pea plant with a white flower and a pea, pan, pea plant with a red flower and put them together and as a result he got a pink flower now you know when he did this a few times he then got two pink flowers and put those together and and got offspring from those effectively and what well what do you think he got from two pink flowers another pink flower well yeah <laughs> is that there's actually three possibilities that he could get from a pink flower because uh, it, it got so it's the, if it was if the flower was two recessive genes and both of them were two recessive genes and you get another pink flower if it was one dominant one recessive then you'd get a let's say blue Egg, exactly exactly that and and he was able to isolate that and no one knew that until he discovered it you see and that's that's how we we began to know about genetics and how how genetics works so anyway yeah i based my system on on that and um it, it even had a system of, of uh, inter, what they call intermediate inheritance, which is effectively that pink flower, where it, it appears to have a new trait, when in actual fact it's just exhibiting both traits from from the parents for the for the colour, you know. So, and, and, and those 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 original traits from the parents are actually preserved, and that's what he was able to show. That these that this genetic information was remaining intact and wasn't just being all mixed together, but because he was actually able to get from the two pink plants, he was able to get like a white one or a red one. Well, it's a ginger was what I was sorry to interrupt. That's what I was going to say. Gingers are the perfect example of this because you can have lines of predecessing parentage that doesn't have ginger hair. Right. So you get a ginger, and it's because. Yeah got two parents one obviously there's not blood relation that comes into that bloodline and has a recessive ginger gene <laughs> and then right recessive in all the other parentage beforehand doesn't mean that there's going to be any gingers until you get another one with a recessive gene suddenly you have a ginger and the milkman's being blamed <laughs> in his yeah yeah so yeah so in second life though these things can sell for quite a lot of money it, you know hundreds of dollars if you've got enough people playing the game um, um so yeah that was what we did but it, it never really it we kind of got it released but it, there was problems with it and the guy i had programming it was he, well he basically i mean he literally went nuts <laughs> i mean he went what you know he, he, went he went mad nuts. really oh yeah yeah he just he went you know he had like a, a break by that by that Jim means he became well, a flat earther so he's probably out here. No, no, no. He did. He went. He went. Did you drive him nuts? And then he like... wouldn't finish it. And I'd paid him eleven thousand pounds as well. Mm. So. Well, did he have like too much of a burden on him? And <laughs> just... mm. well, I mean, I think he was just a lazy cunt, really, more than anything. I think that's his big problem. <laughs> he was irresponsible and lazy, <laughs> and I trusted happened. him, and I shouldn't have. That's, that's sad to hear, bro. Hey, I'm sorry to hear that. That's heartbreaking because the last thing you want is that you just want to see it working. And oh yeah, man, because we worked so hard on it, and we got you know we'd done the marketing, we got loads of people in the group. You know, we got about two and a half thousand uh... Uh, 
pre-orders sold. I mean, we was we was we was ready to mint it, mate. And all he had to oh, do was mate. make the fucking thing work properly. Oh, and it was almost yeah. there, you know. <laughs> Could have been a millionaire by now, you know. Oh fuck it! This is the story of my life, mate. I've been chasing oh, rainbows man. since I was about sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> you should see Pete Shea, man. He's been chasing rainbows his whole life. Have <laughs> you met before, mate? Hmm? Have we spoken before? I don't know. I don't recognize. No, we haven't. No. Uh, oh, right, um, you? okay. Uh, are you a traveling man? Traveling. Uh, <laughs> that's a masonic thing mate. Yeah, this yeah. is this is steve steve antonios or steve anthony sometimes <laughs> and Depending he on the weather. uh he is uh what's he's an acquired taste i'm an acquired taste yes <laughs> but i that's, i like him it's a good way to put it yes it doesn't say much he has a, he has a very 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 dry wit <laughs> they, sometimes you won't even realize that, that that whole last hour conversation you had with him was actually a joke oh no, <laughs> no sometimes no but it, come on but, you know that what? does happen with steve oh What's yeah the... sometimes yes <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the traveling man reference he said are you a traveling uh, man? it's uh the question that freemasons will ask each other uh, well, basically, it's a way of identifying a Freemason. If you go up to someone, you ask them. That's what people man. who talk. And that's then what they people have to who talk about Freemasons. The thing is, I've asked. I've. Then... I think you were in a chat before, and I just uh, I dropped it in and asked you, and then you said, uh, you said yes, and I was like, aha, you're a Freemason. That's not this. <laughs> but I got you. <laughs> yeah. And then it was some sort of a stupid argument about, oh well, I've travelled all over the place. <laughs> it was just like, fuck. I just asked you a question. You said yes. Like you could have just oh, yeah, like, thought that I was referring like, to you being a person that travels regularly or travels to different countries or something like this. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I didn't get the free Masonic reference. No, you didn't. <laughs> I, 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 I was. I've been asked that a few times. But and... haven't, haven't you noticed how I just every now and then I'll just drop in a on a uh, a comment section or something? I'll just say that you're a Freemason. And then you'll be trying to defend yourself and say you're not a Freemason. All the time. You, you, struggling with the mute button, sorry. Uh, that's yeah, right. People always accuse me of being a Freemason. or Oh, that's just one of a list. I don't want to write it off. <laughs> There's loads yeah. of them. You might bring attention to, your, to, to the fact that you're a Freemason. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think that that's a sort of fundamental problem in Flat Earth, is that it's sort of... You know, it keeps eating itself. You know, if anyone that gets pushed to the fore and they're, you know, at the same time, they're automatically under fire. You know, the more popular they become, the more so, under yeah. fire they are. So, so if, if Nathan Oakley became like a, like a kind of like a head honcho for Flat Earth, everyone would be like, hmm, how did he get to this, this position? Well, he's fairly head honcho y. Okay. Yeah, I suppose. He's, a, you know, he's a potato. <laughs> he's a potato. Yeah, he's fully fully ranked up potato, aren't you, Nathan? Fully spudded up oh, potato. Yeah, he, yes. Being a, yes. being a potato. Oh, I, mean, I like I like to think uh, <laughs> the, potato, the potato heads are, are awesome, man. I mean, I'm talking about flat earth and opening up this discussion. It's pretty cool, you know. I, th I think the the, the 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 debate is is very is it's good because then it, it kind of um, gets people to understand what reality is and what isn't reality and what how how do you discern what reality is? But uh, that's what's up, and that's what that I is think. what uh, what is up. I think uh, that idea that you can you know develop your discernment in regards to certain information. I had I've had to do it. I've had to like. I recognize that I need to, or have I had needed to, and I still need to, you know, keep keep learning about this stuff. If you're gonna, you know, we're gonna make a claim that there's some holes in the game, we should be up to speed with the uh, with the model proposed. I think uh, there's certain people out here that really exemplify that and understand full well the model and can uh, explain it from either perspective, or at least look at look at yeah. it from. Uh, a heliocentric model, and then also convert it to to be able to see how a flat plane could work. 
You know, I like that. It's still entertaining both ideas. So what, I, have, what, I, I have my own opinion on it, but like, hmm. you know, people, people are entitled to their own, you know? What is, what is the whole, how does Freemasonry become part of flat? Like what, what, what is it? Like? Well, if you got to look at it like this, this Freemasonry topic has been out here since the freaking nineties. I yep. imagine. And, uh, and really, it's just uh, it, it has culminated into kind of like a, a catch-all, if not you know there's yep. like one of there's one of like three groups that get blamed for everything, and now granted like you know there's a case to be made for why people are making those claims, uh, you know in, in but you know everything is conjecture, and so you know mm. therefore I recognize that too, but I also I also entertain the likes of uh, I love you know there's some good presentations regardless of the candle Bernie esque kind of feel of it is from Michael Tessarian. You know, I know a lot of people don't like that dude, but I like some of his stuff, especially on psychology. I mean, the guy is, I like that guy in the, in that sense. And it's a good breakdown. Um, Like, you know, but to entertain those thoughts, you know, he talked about like this idea of post humanism and, you know, and uh, just all kinds of entertaining or, you know, not, not even entertaining, but possible things in regards to certain, uh, uh, futuristic technologies. Even. Yeah, I mean th- things that could happen in the future that haven't fully. Um, well, you know, yeah, you were talking about themselves. cryogenics. You were talking about oh, yeah. cryogenics. Yes, so that that could be a thing. Um, but they've even they've frozen people, kind of hedging their bets that in the future there's going to be a a breakthrough where they're going to be able to defrost these people and uh, reanimate them, if you will. <laughs> Do you believe that? Mm. I think anything's I mean, possible. So check it out. Back to the question we were asking, Jim. If you, if you die, right? Is it your the? Is it your body that goes into the ground, or is it you? It's yeah, yeah. It's it's you. I mean, I mean, it depends on what you mean. What are you putting into the? Into the, I mean, if someone's lost a head, obviously, then that's a different question. But it's still their, <laughs> it's still their body, right? Um, but I mean, if you're putting the body whole intact into the ground, then yes, or what, or into a cryogenic chamber or whatever, then yes, it is. As a whole, yes, it is. Right. But so the but, think, but okay. So got... if you separate the head from the body, the head is is what is you because that is where all all thought comes from. Yeah, That's well, actually how my granddad died. How? He had his head chopped off oh. in a in a, a baler accident. Oh you know, fucking like, hell, man! Like a baler on a farm. No shit. Oh jeez, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. A friend of mine, friend of mine, uh, no, a friend of mine cut his finger off with the uh, with the fucking oh uh, brutal shit, man. Ugly stuff. God bless, man. I stubbed my. T- I hate all that shit. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I stubbed my toe. Fuck off, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad the injury is slightly less serious. <laughs> uh, yeah, forgive me, guys. I don't want to. Yeah, stop for a while. Yeah, man, yeah. It's all right. Well, I didn't know my granddad. It was actually uh, before I was born. That one. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, you see some t- terrible shit on live leak and stuff like that, don't you? No, it's disgusting. So, yeah, I don't like that shit. You know, mm. the gory. I don't like anything to do with like. I like. I like. I like. I like positive stuff. You know. You yeah, enough, yeah. If once you've seen enough shit, and if you've seen enough shit in your world, you're just like, yeah. yeah I'd rather do this. Yeah, like seeing people get sucked into like paper, like news, like yeah, paper printing machines and stuff, and just getting shit. totally squished. It's like fucking hell. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, it's not like you could choose which way to go, but I mean. It's like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, no, Sometimes you've got to have your wits about you in the, that, that kind of in industries and stuff. Yeah, yeah well, you got to be careful with it, I guess. Mm. They have their uses. I've, I've recommended um, a gore site several times, and I got a stick for it once because so, I recommended it. Was and, it best gore? Yeah, best gore. Yeah, everyone knows that. I mean, right, unless right. you're screamish. I mean, sure, but it's useful. Yeah. It's, if you've got lots of people going, oh, this false flag's real. You go, okay, well, let's have a look at what their evidence is with this dead body. And then you get a best score and do a side-by-side comparison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, exactly. Like, you're going to have people that 
Yeah, I don't even question want to talk it. About and and you don't, they don't even show these images in the news. So they'll blur them out, and you won't be able to see what you know what's actually going on there. But you can actually see the uncensored pictures on this site, and obviously, it's probably a good idea that it's hidden away like that. So you know, the squeamish I people. I've across something like that once, and I, yeah, never again. Yeah, I mean, I'll go on to every now and then, but sometimes that, you're just like, yeah, fucking hell, I'm so mean, lucky. Fuck it, yeah. it's in your head then. You know what I mean? But it makes you feel lucky, though. And it makes you, if you read the story and you realize how no, this, shit, how this yeah, happened. Yeah, no, 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 realize... yeah, yeah, that shit is fucking yeah. disturbing, man. Like, I, I really, if we, again, the problem is that we don't recognize that there's certain things that are disturbing. There's certain things that, sh you know, shouldn't be sought to see, I think. Well, maybe from, we, not for young people, but if you can understand yeah, no, the circumstances well, I, course, and how it happened, then it's I'm good. Glad, it's okay, good. No, 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 no. I'm glad that it's there so that people can go. You know what I'm saying? Like, in that sense. But it's like, hmm. I don't really want to talk about any of that madness here. You know what I mean? I don't like that vibes. I don't like, uh, even, re you know, it's not my, it's not my vibes. I just don't like it. But like, you know, when you talk to, you know, like, you know, back to your discussion about like Freemason and stuff. You know, Oh yeah, for Freemason. Okay. You know I mean? Like you know, like you know, like the idea of why these entities get blamed. Oh know? yeah. Um, and so, hmm. like you know, I don't. I, I think uh, it's just they're, they're catch-alls for, like we were saying, for all this uh, other dramatic stuff. Now, I don't know what's you know what's what in regards to that world. I don't make any claims like that. All I know is I find the information that is out there and available to me very fascinating. That's all. Imagine being a Jewish Freemason NASA employee. Oh God! Get the fuck your life. Like That's catching. it. You're no, well, no, no, no. Well, yo, I tell you, what, <laughs> not out here, maybe, but not necessarily in, in his work. Maybe he's, you know, he's an excellent. He's you know, really successful, whole, and he's got, got a whole high-paying job. And... He's got a whole community of people around him that support him, and make <laughs> yeah, him, like you know, Freemasons, and, and make him. Well, no, but I'm saying, like, I think of it like you know, look at like Scientology, even like the way they do it, or like the TED conventions, where like you can't leave. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, imagine, you know, that's, you know, and it's all good. People are free to do what they want. You know, I like the 13th Amendment. He says, uh, you know, that there shall be no involuntary servitude. You know, mm. that's implying that there is voluntary <laughs> servitude. So if you want to go servitude style, then you can volunteer into this servitude or that servitude or whatever, yeah. which one you want. Right. Mm. I mean, I. Uh... I don't know. I mean, I used to think that, you know, you just kind of follow on what people say and just say, oh, Freemasonry is bad. But when you look into it, it's just all it is is a quest for not. It's just kind of like they're kind of giving you the ropes. That's how I look at it. I look at it like there's learn. information. And yeah, it's it's almost like a rather, you know what I mean? Like if you went and tried to search for the knowledge yourself, it's going to be difficult. But if, if these people helped you along and everyone helped each other, then you're then you're learning. And you're gaining the knowledge, and also all the ceremonies and all this stuff. You're it's almost uh, intertwining the knowledge. Into, it's almost like learning by doing. And yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I'm not one of them, but I look at it like uh, I don't I don't believe it. it's yo to each their own, man. They worship, you know, to they can worship. They worship. I mean, I don't know if they're I really worship, worshiping worship. it. I'm just, no, no. I'm just saying whatever you, yeah. you know, whatever it is. But I just look at it like to them to their. You know, they can worship what they worship, mm. I worship what I worship. But, uh, and I think, you know, there is a certain kind of a cosmic law out there that God knows how it works. But there's a certain unveiling, I think, that's happening. And part of it is some of the revelation of their, of any of these entities' sacred mm. knowledge. And their knowledge is sacred. But I mean, the, the knowledge maybe, doesn't necessarily and, have to be that the kind of stuff that like the shape of the earth and mathematics and all that stuff. It could just be stuff that can help you get a lot right. Check this out, in day-to-day -day yeah. life and help you get through things yeah. a lot easier than someone who doesn't know I like the story about of, how uh, certain things work. And, I like uh, this, the story of um, in uh, Morals and Dogma when uh, Albert, like, Albert Pike writes about how the adept, you know, he has to fight um, this uh, Lucifer. <clears throat> and he fights Lucifer and he slays him. And then after he slays Lucifer, Lucifer turns into the Christ and says, finally, now you're ready. So, you know, this is like the kind of knowledge to me that I find fascinating. Whether people want to accept that as literalism or whatever they want to do, regardless, I find that parable very interesting to me. I mean, that, that but that kind of, but you can, you can take that whichever way you want it, though. It's, it's, you can, um, I can't remember the word, but you can, you can, you can take that however you want to perceive it. 
of course. that kind of but, knowledge. Oh yeah, no, I just I, I, mean, I think but, of it but, like once you can, you know, what what's what's against you sometimes is only to make you stronger, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, once, once, yeah, I mean, you, you can, you can, come up to a challenge and then get past it, and then you realize, holy shit, I've actually done that. That's done. I've done it, and wow, I'm, I'm a stronger person because of it. Yep. Um, a lot of people don't face that, mm. and that's what I think intellectually. There is that, and there is also for me. I, you know, I look at it like in martial arts, like the idea of. Being able to get better or something to that effect. I have yeah. experienced. I can I can identify with it in my mind how that correlates. That's all. But if somebody else wants to say something. I was just going to ask what what you did is with Freemasonry. Then is it are you for it? Are you against it? Is Steve right? I don't think. I don't think it's. Well, okay. Listen, I don't think it's as. Mm, I okay. From what I know, I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. Then again, uh, there may be, and I'm not saying there is, or and I'm just saying that there maybe the knowledge that is gained from Freemasonry can be used for good or bad. It depends on the person, and dep depends on how they use that knowledge. It's yeah. almost like a double-edged sword. Knowledge can be used for good or bad. I'll you can use it to save. You can use it to to uh, to help people. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, it's interesting where you were talking about. I'm not going to bring this back onto gore. Don't worry, Easter. Yeah. But when you were talking about removing the head and you bury the body, you were saying, well, because it's the head and that's where the knowledge comes from, that's like different. But I would say, mm, no. I mean, what's. Well, yeah, as, yeah, it's all one one thing. And with. with, with um, because you've only used your body, you've kind of come to learn that your body is you. And and uh, if if you look into like uh, neuroscience and things like that, you realise that there are certain parts of the bod of the brain that grow with the body, like say uh, the optical nerve, um, and the the spinal cord, and um, they just grow with the body. And if you just attached something else to the body, the body would have to learn how to use it. So, um, in that kind of sense, I think the knowledge is gained in in the brain, but but being able to use a body, it, the brain has to grow with, alongside the body to be able to use it, unless there's some new science that comes along in the future where they can manage to get around that and or something, then whatever. Mm, um, I, I, what I was going to say is I, I, I view it very differently in terms of what you are not being you or your body or how you utilise your body, but more the things that you do. So what makes me me is this conversation as in the things i actually do yeah does that make sense so once mm -hmm. i'm dead doesn't matter how i'm chopped up i'll no longer do anything therefore that's the thing that made me me and i'll no mm. longer be doing that i mean okay so in the way that okay so because you as you is your body your your, your entirety is you now but you could if you could function without your body and still be able to talk to people, you would essentially just be using your head and talking for a microphone. Um, you know what I mean? Kind of. There's a yeah. movie recently called Chapel, although it's not a new movie. And mm. in the movie, the robot figures out a way of taking consciousness and putting it onto a disc, and then he uploads a couple of human consciousness um discs onto robot bodies which kind of poses mm. and well like you say if, if all you are is your consciousness that's the... what you are as a robot consciousness doing things is that still you I would <laughs> this is getting quite deep because uh, <laughs> because <laughs> you man. there's Go extremes <laughs> of of person and things like that and there's hormones and things that go on that can uh, almost amplify certain uh personalities within a, a body um within a brain you know within a person and you know and make you think certain ways so i th it depends on the chemical balance and, and all that stuff i think um 
and and essentially your your brain is just is just working on chemicals that are chemical reactions in your in your brain um and what's going on around you um it you'd have to make it an extremely kind of balanced environment it, it's difficult to gauge what what you is you know what i mean um because there's all this stuff going on I guess until you've actually grown up and got to the point where all those hormones and puberty and all that stuff's got past, gone past, then you can actually kind of get to this point where you're you, you're trying to figure out what you what you are. Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah. I agree, and but beyond that, I say, no, understanding what you are is is it, for me recently is a realization of that you, you're capable of doing things and that's yes. what being, being is the actual doing and yeah. it seems like a lot of life's patterns are designed to get you into exactly that a pattern where you kind of don't really do anything you kind of born live and die and nothing happens in between for a lot of most people and mm. you know what you are what what we have is a really precious gift you know, being is amazing. You know, I just see life as wonderful. It, I'm not an eternal optimist, yeah. but I just do see that just being is a fantastic thing. But most people don't. Most people are worried about their tax bill. Their, I mean, uh, most people they just they just do. You know, yeah. they they just do. They just act. They just do whatever it is, whatever, however, whatever was going on in their mind right now. They just do. You know, and it's. It, it's almost like that that quote, you know. Er, it's, oh, I can't. I'm not going to say it verbatim, but it's uh, it's almost like you've got to sit. Oh, life's moving so fast that you have to almost you have to sit around, you know, and you can see everything moving past you. You know, it, it's almost like you're not really. You, you're just you're just acting and you're just doing straight away. That's what's expected of you. But if you just sit down and watch what's going on around you, it's crazy. Um, something along those lines. Probably got it totally wrong. No, I got it totally wrong. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's amazing that we can think about this sort of stuff. Um, probably didn't get much time to think about it, you know, back then. Maybe the, the only people that got to think about it were philosophers and people 